Yesterday I watched a game between two players rated about 1500 and they both were pretty consistent in playing run moves, they played them throughout the opening both for white and black side consistently, like for 10 or 15 moves in a row basically. And then I checked the database to verify whether it's common or not and I was shocked that actually it is so common, especially on the level below 1600, people just play the Queen's Gambit so wrong and commit so many common errors that I wanted that we stop it, at least for you, okay? So your pawns are welcome to keep doing them and after watching this video you're gonna know how to make use of them. So what's the problem here? I mean the move pawn to e4 is a little more common on amateur level and so people are more or less familiar with it and know how to play it. It's also more attacking, it's easier to comprehend what to do here. But we're going to d4, it's more strategic stuff and uh, it's, it's a little bit more complex so I just wanted to clarify it for you. I've just opened the database where you can see not only the moves but also the statistics here in the bottom right corner of the most played moves here. So after white played pawn to d4, by far the most common response of black is pawn d5, so far so good, the queen's gambit, white plays pawn to c4 usually, and here you see that the top choice is pawn e6 followed by pawn takes c4 over here. But if I go to the ratings of players and I took away the, the higher rated players who are from 1800 to 2500 and we only focus on players who are 1600 and below, which is actually the majority of the players, then you can see that the move which arises at the top is pawn takes c4. And it's not kind of wrong by itself, but I would say that it is wrong because those who play it usually do not have a specific follow-up, a specific plan in mind. They just see that there is this unpleasant tension, you know, there's a pawn to pick up, so why not? And they grab it. Uh, but without proper plan, you know, this is just a positional concession. Black basically give up the center and I would not recommend that you do that. And what follows next is after black captures this, if white goes pawn to e3 to try to get their pawn back here on c4, you can see that from here the two most common options with nearly equal amount of games played, which are knight to f6, 2 million games, and pawn to b5, which is almost almost 2 million games, just as well. And pawn b5 is just basically a losing error. And probably, hopefully, you are aware of it, just in case I'm gonna show the trap. Here, if black tries to hold on to this pawn on c4, which you should not do if you're playing black, white can undermine it by playing pawn to a4, trying to, you know, break up these pawns and then pick them up. White cannot defend it with pawn to a6, because after white captures over here, you know, the pawn is pinned, it cannot recapture, so that's bad for black. And if instead black protects it with the move pawn to c6, which is the top choice of black, then white happily trades the pawns, and after this exchange, we're continuing with the move queen to f3, which basically wins the game, because there is no way for black to avoid material loss. This rook cannot move, so at the very best, they have to give up the knight by playing knight to c6, but it's going to be captured, and black is losing the game anyway. So that's how you see, like, so many games are ending just like that, okay? So at least we're going to stay away from that, or make use of that if you're playing white. By the way, if you want to know more traps and common tactics in the Queen's Gambit, I've got another dedicated video about that, you may check it out later. Okay, now let me bring back the game that I was talking about at the very beginning and show you how wrong, you know, both players can be if they aren't familiar that well with the Queen's Gambit. So at first, as we discussed, I mean, you should not really capture this pawn if you're playing black. Just defend your center by playing pawn to e6. But if black does capture this pawn, white may play pawn to e3 trying to get it back. And as we know, black should not try to hold on to this pawn because b5 is just going to be a losing error. Now, what do you do instead? Well, black just develops knight of 6. So far so good, white picks up this pawn, black usually goes pawn e6, white develops just as well, and here according to the database the most popular move of black is yet another error, which is a move bishop to b4 check. Now you may wonder what's wrong with this move. And the point is, yes, black does want to prepare their castling, but this bishop on b4 is kind of meaningless, you know, it doesn't really do anything, because if white simply covers their king, you know, this bishop does not attack anything, right? Okay, temporarily pins the knight, but white's gonna castle anyway and move their king away, and then this bishop is simply misplaced and doesn't do anything. Now, what should black do instead of that? Well, basically, in an opening, you want to fight for the center, develop, and castle, right? So, how do you fight for the center? Well, black should play pawn c5, you know, knight to c6, bishop e7, and castle, and then you accomplish all of these goals. You fight for the center, challenging white's control in the center, and you try to develop. So, that's what black should do. But instead, in reality, they play a bishop b4 check to the king, and as white covers that, black follows up with one more mistake. They capture here on c3. And that's another pretty huge positional mistake by now. What's the problem here? Well, generally speaking, bishop is actually a bit stronger than a knight. So this kind of an exchange favors white. It's kind of like white already got a little bit of material advantage. And you should not do that when you're playing black. And if you're white, you're happy, okay? You've got this strong center. 
You've got this potential diagonal for your bishop to be placed. You've got a new semi-open file for your rook. Life's cool. Okay, let's move on. After that, black castle, white castle just as well. Black played knight to c6. Once again, another positional error. By playing knight to c6, black blocks their c-pawn so it cannot move forward and challenge white center. And by completely abandoning the central control, they give white an opportunity to grab the center and to get a complete domination. Now, how does white do that? Well, ideally you want to have this ideal pawn center with two pawns on d4 and e4. We already have one on d4, so we need to prepare this move pawn to e4 by now. Because if you play that right away, black is going to capture it. So how do you prepare it? Well, for example, with the move queen to c2, something that I would recommend. Now we aim to play pawn e4 and build this beautiful center. Black plays pawn a6, and then you play pawn e4, and you're good to go. Now we have these two pawns, and basically already a winning game. Now you have two bishops, you have strong center, your bishop is ready to be brought over there. Either of your pawns is ready at suitable moment to go forward and start the attack, and black really has nothing to do. So that's how a couple similarly small positional errors got black in a position where they're completely stuck, and white can attack them in numerous different ways. Black now went pawn to b5, and if your pawn plays that, you gotta thank him, because, you know, from here the bishop was not doing much anyway. It was kind of stuck with this pawn on e6, but now you can relocate it to a much better diagonal, you know, where it can hit black on the king side. And in this position, black actually overlooked this threat and played bishop b7, which was losing. But, you know, their position is very difficult anyway, because even if they find a way to defend them temporarily, again, you can bring this bishop over here, you can push the pawn at some point, your have the pieces are lining up against black along this diagonal, and black has no attack, no counterplay whatsoever. But in the game, black played bishop b7, overlooking this threat of pawn to e5, which chases this knight away from f6, and as that happens, white can happily grab this pawn in f7, check to the king, notice that we have two pieces, therefore the bishop cannot be captured, black has to move the king away, and now white can just go all the way forward and checkmate black knight g5, and after that you can either lift your queen somewhere here, and deliver a checkmate that way, or even you can even play some fancy moves such as like bishop to g8, you know, sacrificing the bishop and vacating a square for your queen to arrive there with the next train and to finish it off. Besides accepting the gambit, there is also one more extremely common error, and I'd love to share with you how we can take advantage of this. But before that, let me also tell you that I completely agree with many of you who write in the comments that all these opening operations are nice and useful to know, but of course, it's not enough to become a strong player, because chess is primarily a strategic game, and your level of positional understanding, for the most part, determines your chess progress. And with that being said, I'm happy to invite you to the current cohort of students who are gonna start learning the course 7 keys to victory. It's one of my flagship courses where I teach you 7 main principles, main strategies, which is enough to level up your chess, and students often get 1, 2, even 300 rating points just from this course alone. And if you join right now, you get a lot of cool bonuses, discounts, access to me, access to other students in our private community, and whatnot. So if that sounds good, you may click the link below the video and join us right now. Back to the Queen's Gambit, another extremely common error of black at this point is playing knight to f6. And at first it seems meaningful, because white wanted to attack black center, and black kind of defended it. But that is actually wrong, because in an opening you do want to have your pawns in the center of the board, not your pieces. What's the problem with having your pieces there? Well, if, as white takes here, black will have to put one of their pieces in the center of the board, which will give white some extra temples for their attack. Black moves their queen out, white can now play knight to c3, develop their knight, and gain a tempo by attacking this queen, and as the queen moves away, white can push the pawn in the center of the board, pawn e4, and once again grab the center. That's completely great for white. If we take it back, if black captures it with the knight, then basically we get to the same outcome. White can now play pawn e4, chase this knight away, grab the center, and, you know, black has to waste time, let's say knight f6 or whatever, and we play knight c3, and again, white reached this already ideal central position where you have more space, uh, you are free to develop your pieces however you like, to the most active squares possible. These pawns are always going to be annoying for black, because, you know, they can always move forward and attack this knight. If black ever moves this knight forward, you can always move this pawn forward and chase that knight away. So you can see that black is already quite in trouble just within a couple moves, you know, by playing these wrong moves. And actually, just to let you know, in most cases white actually fails to take use of this opportunity, and here after black just played knight f6, instead of grabbing this pawn and getting this super advantageous position, White usually continues with knight c3, missing the mark and missing their opportunity to get an, like, maybe not a winning position, but uh, at least a very dominant position. So here, once again, pawn takes d5 is much better for white, because after that you can follow up with e4, grab the center, 
push the knight away, and after knight c3, life's good. Usually black continues with pawn e6, then we go knight to a3, and here black plays once again that common error that we talked about previously. They develop their bishop to b4, to a seemingly active square where it really does nothing actually in reality. Because after a bishop b4, yes, temporarily it pins the knight, but we know that the king is gonna castle in a couple moves anyway, so that doesn't really bother white, and other than that, the bishop doesn't do anything there, it doesn't attack anything, black does not want to trade it here, because that would only give white some material advantage, because bishop is stronger than a knight, so it would be better for black to keep this bishop on e7, you know, somewhere here, closer to the king, at least it would perform some defensive function, you know, and on b4 it doesn't attack really, it doesn't defend really, it doesn't really do anything. Of course it pins the knight temporarily, so white's got to be careful not to, you know, overlook this pawn, but we can defend it by playing bishop d3, a nice move that we were going to play play anyway. And here, the most common move of black is actually a losing error. Black really here simply castles kingside, failing to notice that there is a common winning tactic here for white. And in most cases, actually white missed the mark once again and missed the opportunity to win the game on the spot with the move pawn e5. Instead, white usually castles, which is nice, but it misses the force and win, which is pawn to e5. And if you're familiar with the Greek gift sacrifice, you can notice that here this pattern works perfectly well. By playing pawn e5, we drive this knight away, it's gonna go somewhere, and after that we're free to sack our bishop over here on h7, which starts this force variation, king takes knight to g5, and that exposes the king. If it goes forward, there's obviously a problem, because we've got our bishop here, and over there, we got our queen ready to attack along this diagonal, you know, where our pawn go forward, so going forward for the king is really and, and, and not a good option. And if it goes back either to g8 or h8, it doesn't really matter. We bring our queen into the attack, now threatening queen to h7 checkmate. The only way for black to stop that would be going rook to e8, trying to provide this escape square for the king. But then there is a force and win here, which is worth knowing. You first take that pawn, and after that you bring the queen back, and there is this force and checkmate. Again, if you are familiar with the great gift sacrifice, just really try to take note of this, because it's a very common tactic that works across different openings. And here with queen h8, king e7, and queen to g7, it is finally a checkmate. And let me cover the final extremely common error played by millions of chess players. It occurs in the slab defense, for example, but in other variations as well. So here, if we, let's say, make a couple developing moves, the error I'm talking about is black trying to bring their light square bishop out somewhere to g4 or maybe f5 and pin your knight and put pressure. It looks good at first, looks like black is playing an aggressive move, but if you know how to make use of that, you can very often make black regret their decision to abandon their queen side, because that's the drawback of this move. Yes, it, it was shifted to the king side, and black has a little bit more influence, so to say, there, but on the other hand, black's queen side was left abandoned, and the weak squares, you know, are gonna be there, and white can attack them. So how do you do that? Well, normally it's the move queen to b3 that you want to keep in mind, because that attacks all these weaknesses. But right now, you can first also play knight to e5, because that moves the knight away from danger, and also attacks this bishop. So it's nice, you could advance your knight with a tempo, and as the bishop goes back, you can trade here on d5 so that black's weaknesses are fixed, and then you play queen to b3, which is extremely annoying. You attack this pawn from here, it's gonna attack the rook, it puts some pressure on the pawn on d5, although it's currently defended, but anyway, it's unpleasant for black, and basically black's already in a huge trouble, and probably already that's just losing for black, simply. And um, if black ever goes something like pawn to b6, for example, that's really nice, because although they saved the pawn, but they weakened some more squares here, the light squares, and we hit in the center with the move pawn to e4, because our aim is to attack all those light squares, and also to get our bishop involved into our attack, and now we do, we do that with a tempo. You see that this bishop on h5 can only reg regret his decision to move away from there and to help black in their defense, but now we're gonna attack all, the, all those weak light squares. Now after e4, black, um, let's, let's say black's gonna capture it, now we play bishop to b5, check to the king. Now the only way to cover that would be knight to d7, and you can see that white exerts really strong pressure on black across multiple directions. You know, thanks to this bishop on h5, though, white cannot deliver this checkmate, which would also be possible in, maybe in some other variations. But even without that, white's winning anyway. And let me ask you about this. How would you finish this off if you're playing white? Is white to play and win? And if you can't find the winning shot, please write it in the comments down below.
We talked a lot about how black or white should not play the Queen's Gambit, and you may wonder how you should play that. If you have this question, then I've got another video with teaches you just that, how to play it right. The link will be on the screen and below in the description. Also, if you're watching this video on time, you may still have an opportunity to join the current group of students studying the course 7 Keys to Victory together with me and with my guidance. If you're interested, you may click the link on the screen or down below in the description and join us right now. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Have a great rest of the day.